we are back for segment four, part one. We're going to be looking at our crackle that we put on and sanding the top, and then we're going to add a poly coat. And in segment four, part two, we'll be going through sanding the top coat and adding more poly coat, sanding again, and then the final product will go on a poly coat. Okay, so let's get started. Let's take a peek at our crackle top. I am so happy the way this came out. Can you guys see all the crackle that came through? I love all these large cracks here. You see right here in the top, we've got this big open area. That's great. With crackle, it anything goes. Just with chalk painting, anything goes. The things that I'm teaching you guys here, you know, this is just the way I do things. You might find things to be a different way that you do it. That's right. Chalk paint is so wonderful that no matter what you do to it, can't go wrong. So check, check it out. We've got that Emperor's Red Silk by Annie Sloan underneath, and we got a turquoise tint by Valspar chalk paint on top. Added a crackle coat from Valspar, let it do its thing, and look at this. Awesome, awesome look. Okay, so now when you have your crackle coat, it's you'll have a little bit of rough spots. So this is where the sanding comes in, and figure out which grit you need. I usually start with the 220, but if I feel like it's glazing the sandpaper, and that what that means is your sandpaper keeps getting a thick coat of paint, you need a, a lower grit sandpaper. So I'm going to start with the 220 and see how that feels. So when you're sanding, it's all about feel, not so much as a look. So I'm just going to sand a little bit. I'm doing very light pressure. I'm not going deep into it. Just and I'm also using a sanding block with a piece of sandpaper. It just makes it easier and even coat with that. So here we go. So I'm sanding, and I'm going to feel it. That feels pretty good. So I think we're doing okay. Just going over, it's not going to be completely smooth. It's not going to be like a glass top. You're going to feel a little bit of the ripples, but we just want to get the, the thicker parts down. So just very, very gently, very, very light coat. Barely touching it, and always use your hand. Go back over. How fun is this? Okay. It's feeling pretty good. Nice and smooth. If you get, sometimes you'll get an occasional thick spot. I'll try it with the 220 and I'll see it starting to glaze over. What it does is it discolors it. So I'm going to switch my 220 and I'm going to go right to a 150 grit. And this is from a full sheet. I just fold it in half and fold it in half and now I got a quarter sheet. So I'm gonna go over this one little spot right here. It just feels just a little rough. And that's a little better. I just use my hand to feel. Again, it's not gonna be silky smooth. It should be okay because once we put the poly coat on top, it'll be fine. It'll be protected from any kind of water damage. You can put anything you want on top of it. Okay, I think that's the best it's gonna get on that. I'll just do a quick 150 over the top. Not going too hard, just barely touching it. I don't want to take off that beautiful crackle that's on there. And that's it. Just went over it real quick. See what works for you. This is what works for me. Okay, so now we're going to start distressing. And that's another thing that you're going to have to just start out with and see which grit sandpaper works. Sometimes you have a thinner coat of paint, you might just need a 220. This one I already started on a little bit, so I need a 150. This paint goes on really nice and really sticks. So I'm going to turn it on its side. And what you're going to do when you're distressing is just you're going to find the edges. You want to find the edges and just take off a little bit of paint, like it's been worn and chipped and bumped into or whatever. So you're just going to go over it. You can use the foam pad or just take it off and just use the sandpaper alone. Take that off and I'm just going to fold it like this. And just go over it. See it's bringing out the nice wood color from underneath and what a nice contrast that is. Love it. Almost a golden color. Gone down to the original wood with just a little bit of that 150 grit sandpaper. And again, just like chalk painting, there's no right or wrong way to do this. Just go for it. Just have fun. Figure out what works for you. 
I'm going along just these little edges. And I try not to do too much at a time. Uh, you know, I want to go back and if I see it needs a little more, I can do a little more. But I don't want to take off too much. You know, different projects call for different kind of distressing. So that's what I'm going to do on the top. I'm not touching anything on the top up here. I'm just going to go around the edges. Hopefully you can see how it's really highlighting that wood underneath. Now, for the legs right here, these are the easy part to do because you're just going to go right along the edge. Ooh, look at that. Nice color contrast. And just go where it would naturally wear. You can go on the inside here a little bit. See how easy that is? Just 150 grit. And I always have a towel down, and I just take my sandpaper and rub it on the towel. Gets all that paint that's building up on there. And your sandpaper's nice and clean again. So I'm not spending too much time with this. Just going around, just seeing what I personally like, you know. Just make it for you. See what works for you. You can go along in inside, right here. Now see, there's a little tiny piece of, of wood that's chipped out of there. That's fantastic. I like to see things like that because I can go with my sandpaper and I'll go right around it. Oh, it just give me a fantastic distressing look. See? Easy. There we go. Look at this leg. I just love this table. <laughs> Having a lot of fun with it. And up here, it's got some little grooves in the wood. And I'm just going to go along. Now, I think I might switch to my 220 because I think the, the, the 150 might be too rough for that. I might take off too much of my turquoise, and I don't want to take off that beautiful blue color. So, take it. Oh, yeah, there we go. Just roughing it up a little bit. Not taking off too much. Don't go too far. Take a look at it. See if that's what you like. Do what you like. Not exactly what I'm doing, but just whatever works for you. This is going really fast. I'm going to switch back to my 150. Again, don't buy cheap sandpaper. <laughs> You'll keep going through it and going through it. This sandpaper lasts a long time. I mean, it's not really expensive, but just, just buy the 3M. Or I don't know what other brands, but the uh, I think they call it construction grade sandpaper. I think it's about $12 for like five sheets. But again, I cut it in fours lasts a long time okay I'm gonna check out all my legs got one more leg here just bringing out that nice wood tone with emperor silk red and the turquoise oh looks great okay turn oh underside here I missed and that underside and if you remember from my previous segments, I like to do everything upside down. <laughs> so much easier. So I'm going to do these legs on the inside right here so I don't have to bend down so much and see what I'm missing. Look how much easier that is. And then turn it over and see what's on the other side. See what you missed. It doesn't take much distressing to make it look like a whole new piece. It went from that old, dark wood that had the double tier to this fantastic blue color. Now, let's see, did I miss anything up there? And I can get down here with this upside down. That part's not going to show as much, but you want it to be complete. I can get that little spindle tower right here too. Just a little bit. Yep, I was using my 150. I mean my 220. The 150 was giving too many scratches because it's just a small area there. So go back to your 220. I don't really use a 400 grit, which is a very fine grit, because it will glaze. It's not enough. I do use 400 grit sometimes on the top. I'm going to give you my final coat. All right, what do you think? Ready to turn it over? Here we go. Okay, I'm checking all my legs and just make sure that I didn't miss any for distressing or something that needs a little more distressing. I think it looks
that's pretty good. Okay, so back to our sides here. Make sure you got all your distressing done before we start putting on that poly coat because we're going to do that next and we're almost done. So I'm going to just go back over it, like I said. Just do a little bit. Go back and see how it looks. Don't try to do too much at once. It doesn't take much effort at all. Chalk paint is like the most fantastic hobby that I have. It's just, it's all up to you. Whatever you want to do, make it your own. What colors you want, how much you want to distress it. You know, other people have ideas on ways to do things, and that's great. I learn a lot from other people. I like to do things, you know, that I found out that works for me, and I like to share that with you. Okay, here we go. I got a little bit of paint right there. And I don't always use crackle on everything. I just wanted to show you guys how crackle looks. Oh, here's a little thing I did right here. I added a little gold gilding because I think it looks pretty good. Maybe we'll do that later. I was just trying it out. Okay. Like I said, I am in love with turquoise and red right now. Coppers and golds. They're just fun colors that are bright. Look great on wood furniture. It goes with pretty much any decor. You can just put it in your house and just build your house around those colors. They look great. This tape is a lot of fun working on. Even though it's about 105 today. <laughs> it was about 102 before. Now it's about 105. But I'm doing okay. My glasses are sliding down, but I'm doing all right. Okay. I think I'm done. All right. So. We got all that sawdust on there. I'm not going to take any water cloth or anything. I'm just going to take a dry cloth. That's not dry. No, but it's just damp cloth. Okay, we're going to wipe it all down. Just wiping a little bit of the dust off. There's not much there. I didn't create a lot of sawdust, but just a lot of paint dust. Just wiping it down. Getting it ready for the next step. I hope you guys try to go to a yard sale, find a piece, and just say, I'm just going to go for it. I'm just going to try it. Just do it. Because you know what? If you don't like it, just paint something else on it. It's very forgiving. You'd be surprised how it looks at the end. You think, oh, it's just this sloppy, sloppy paint. How could this make look any good? You know, I'm so used to doing everything. It has to be perfect, perfect lines. Nope. You have permission to be sloppy. <laughs> All right, I think I've got it all dusted off. Poly coat's coming next. Upside down. Okay. I use polycrylic by Minwax, and this is a clear matte. I like the matte because it doesn't give any sheen at all. This was very difficult to find, but now I find it all the time at Home Depot, and I actually saw it at Walmart the other day. So, fantastic find. Let me get my paint can opener. Okay, always use a secondary container. You never want to go right into your can. Okay, with the poly coat, there's your little <laughs> plastic coat there. Just take that off. You're going to pour it into a secondary container. You don't need a lot. That's about a cup. Because just like the chalk paint, it starts changing when you have it out and you're dipping into it. It starts getting real foamy. And I like to have a nice new cup each time I do it. I will stop in the middle of a project, even if I have some left over, go rinse out my brush and come back. Okay. This brush I've had for a long time. It's made by Purdy. Purdy makes really good brushes. Like I told you before, take care of your brushes and it lasts a long time. But I try to keep the same brush for my poly coat. Just because there's no red tint to it, you know, there's no hidden paint particles in there. So we're going to go right, using our pretty poly coat coming up. And I'm not putting on a thick coat. I'm not trying to do it all at once. i got plenty of time. I can always come back. I'm going to just start at the bottom, and I'm just going to start sloshing it around. Quite a bit on there. But as hot as it is today, this will dry fast. And then I can come back and put a second coat. I usually do two coats on the body and about four coats on top because that's going to be used the most and sanding on the top in between coats the body not too much 
you kind of just have to look at your project and think, does it need a little bit of sanding? Maybe a little bit. Try that. Okay, so we did that. I'm going to go right up to the legs. Now upside down, so I'm painting this whole thing without having to bend over, see what's going on, and when I turn it over, I can get those parts that I missed. And once you put on the poly coat or a wax coat, the colors really start popping. You can really start seeing the red come through here. The distressing is a whole nother dimension. I'm loving this. So I want you guys to all go out there, go to a yard sale. Don't pay more than ten dollars or something. Just get something you can handle. A little table like this is perfect. A little end table, a great way to start. Just get some chalk paint. Just start. Usually you have to do some repairs, like I was saying before, but a little wood glue goes a long ways. Okay, I'm up to this leg. See how fast this is going? Not using the lot. The lot stays on this brush. It's a very nice brush. Watch for your drips because they look ugly. You'll have a, a white drip. So you don't want to overload your paintbrush when you're painting. Sometimes you just can't help it. Easy, right? You guys can do this. So much fun. And then once you start doing it, oh my gosh. Next thing you know, you're dumping, driving, <laughs> going into dumpsters, looking for furniture. You're like, don't throw that away. I'll do something with it. <laughs> I can do something with it. You can paint old mirrors make your bathroom look awesome. You paint uh, picture frames with chalk paint. Look on Pinterest. They'll be there all day long. There's all kinds of things you can do. Just don't be afraid. Just go for it. Just try it. Okay, this is drying super fast. Lovely 105 degrees. I can handle it. I'm doing okay. Got my water. Got my fan on me. All right, I'm going to turn this thing over. You want to put your hand in right where you painted. Oops, it's got a little blob there. Okay, here we go. So now I'm going to just check out and see what I missed. Not too much. Just go back over the tops here. Isn't that a nice way to paint? And usually I have this on a, you know, a higher table, so it's even easier to do that. But I'm trying to show it to you guys that I have it on a little lower table. So I am bending over a little bit more. I hope you can see how well the distressing is coming out on this. Really, really happy with it. And if I wasn't happy, I would just paint it over. Find something else. <laughs> like I said, the paint's a little more expensive, but you use so little each time you paint. And you would never see that about latex. How many of you have painted a bedroom and seen how much paint you use? And I, you know, latex is even, it's so expensive nowadays too. It's not even cheap anymore. Like $30 a gallon. Okay. One more leg. And then we're going straight to the top. This is almost dry over here. I'm just looking to see if I have any drip marks. Doesn't look like it. A little bit right there. I'm gonna wipe some sweat off. <laughs> it's hot. <laughs> gotta keep my glasses on. Okay, so now we're gonna go to the top with our beautiful crackle. God, I love this. That looks just so awesome. What a difference in just having it just, you know, plain blue to having all this character. It's so easy to do. Just put it on and put your paint on. Walk away. Okay, so now we're doing the top. Top's a little bit different. I do put a little bit of a thicker coat, but not a thick coat, if that makes any sense, okay? We're going to put it on, and we're going to let it dry, and then we're going to sand it just lightly. Not, not a big deal. Don't get scared. I'm not putting more work into it, but just a little bit. Just to knock it down a little bit, and then we'll put another coat on. So let's go ahead. Start in the middle here. Just wiping it on. You don't have to do it straight. You don't have to worry about your line marks of 
the poly coat is going to dry really hard and give you a fantastic water seal in a matte that you're not even going to see. No shiny coat. So it's still going to look vintage. There we go. I'm not going to work this over too much. If I miss some spots, that's okay. Because the next time I get it. I think I got everything on there, though. There we go. Okay, now I'm going to do the sides. These beautiful sides that show the red coming through. I did a super light coat on this because, oh, God, I just love the way that looks. Just old, worn-looking wood. Okay, I'm going all the way around. Super easy, super fast. Almost done. Oops, got a little bit too much. I'm starting to drip, so I'll just wipe it off. Trying to go too fast. Settle down. <laughs> Here we go. Okay, almost to the end. And then we're just going to leave it alone. I'm going to let it dry. And then it's part two of segment four. A little bit of sanding. And then the next coat. And I think we're going to be able to call it done. Okay. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time. Bye.